Hey, you know, you got some fire. You be going down the road, and all of a sudden you hear a church song come on. That's why I like choir music so well. It reminds me of church, and I get going down the road listening to a good choir song, and all of a sudden I forget where I'm at. I'm in the middle of the car, but I'm having church. Excuse me, officer. Forgot myself. The Holy Ghost got to moving, and I got to stop on that foot. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship team, for helping us tonight. Amen. Well, I believe the Lord inhabits the praises of God's people. And I'll just be truthful with you. Somebody says, well, all that shouting's a bunch of nonsense. Try it. You may like it. I always feel better. I always feel better. Amen. I'm going to church hurting in my body. But I got to praising the Lord and all of a sudden that pain was gone. But that's just me. Praise God. It's so good to have, amen, brother and sister Wooten with us tonight. Amen. We're always on. Brother Wooten, won't you come and just give a word tonight? Amen. I heard he voted me in for everything that was available yesterday at the meeting. Amen. There's a mic right there for you. Voted for the pastor. Praise God. We have a wonderful pastor. We have a wonderful pastor. God has put the eternal spirit of life deep down in our soul. Praise God. Aren't you glad that you got that down in your soul tonight? Paul and Silas was in prison or in jail. <laughs> and they... Uh, were beaten they were beaten but they began to sing like sister Waddy there's nobody that can sing like sister Waddy they began to sing and and uh, I, I have privy I have I know what they were singing they told me over in Memphis Tennessee they were singing I don't regret a mile that I traveled for the Lord I don't regret a time that I trusted in his word. You can trust in him. Somebody said, what's the, what's the, what's, what's the uh, good news? The good news is that the bad news is wrong. Hallelujah. Praise God. To be absent from the body, Brother Teeman, is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was over at Anthony Mangan's, the Mangan's church. We used to go over there real often, but we don't go as often anymore. But Brother Mangan, they said, what do you want them to say at your going home service? He said, they want them to say, he's moving. <laughs> hey, he, he wasn't moving yesterday, but brother, our friend, Thomas, he'll be moving. Hallelujah. One day at the sound of the trumpet, we're going to be moving. Hallelujah. We have a home. We have an eternal home. Hallelujah. 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 If this house was destroyed, we have a house in heaven. Hallelujah. There's no mortgage up there. <laughs> no taxes up there, sister. Oh, Zacchaeus, he said, I'm going to give them back sevenfold. He, 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 he would rip you off when it comes tax time. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God has grace on the tax collector too. God has grace on people that you don't like. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody said at the meeting yesterday about the friends, I said, well, hey, they say friends come and go, but enemies accumulate. You notice that? <laughs> Hallelujah. We have a home, church. We have a home. We have a home. My wife's been talking to me about going and getting the uh, signing up for my pension. That's what, they, that's what my grandparents used to call it. 
you know, I had an epiphany. I thought, for me? <laughs> hey, uh, people think I dyed my hair gray, but it, I have grandchildren now. <laughs> I'm glad you squashed that rumor. I have, I have grandchildren now. <laughs> Praise God. And I have a mature wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. They say behind every successful man stands an astonished mother-in-law. I'm still working on mine. But church, we have a home. We have a home where the roses never fade. Hallelujah. My dad passed away. He didn't go to church much and I cried for three weeks, three, three months after he passed away. But my mom, I've never really shed any tears over my mom because she had an experience. She had the law of the spirit of life. Hallelujah. And there wasn't a, a dull moment around that lady. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the little grandkids, great grandkids, they loved to be around her because there wasn't a dull moment. She had the law of the Spirit. When you get the law of the Spirit, that supersedes all the laws of nature. It supersedes all the laws of sin and death. Hallelujah. 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 I don't have an appointment with death, but I have an appointment with God. Hallelujah. God is not only awesome, He's brilliant. Our God robed Himself in flesh and came down and died for us. Hallelujah. He was a spirit. The Bible said God is a spirit, and they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. But he put his work clothes on one day, and he came down in flesh just like you're in tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came down to tell us we have a home. We have an eternal home. Hallelujah. There's nothing like this home. Hallelujah. 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 We done felt more in here. We were in Houston yesterday afternoon. There are people, to get a bad seat is $4,000 up there. Hallelujah. I used to play a little bit of football until the coach told me you have to practice. <laughs> I thought all you had to do is hit people in the mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's four thousand dollars. That's I told Sister Wooden if if, if we, we want to go, it costs us eight thousand dollars. You'll have to stay home. <laughs> but hey, you can't pay for what we felt in here. We have a home. We have a home. Our our fantastic president. That's the way he talks. So that's the way I'm going to talk. He said. It's going to be great again. It's going to be better than great again. We're going to get tired of winning. <laughs> but he said he stepped into a pulpit. This is when he was still running against that lady, Hillary. <laughs> but he said he stepped into a pulpit and said he felt something he'd never felt before. And he went home, got his mother's Bible, and he even started carrying it around with him from one campaign to the other. I'll tell you what, he needed it. He's dealing with Bill Clinton. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. But our church, don't, don't fear death. Don't even worry about death. Praise God. I tell my wife every once in a while, I said, when I die, I want you to get you a good man this time. That's why I'm working so hard so y'all won't have to struggle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love this church. And I love the people of this church. I love the pastor. God sent us a great, wonderful oh. pastor. Hallelujah. But he wouldn't have his great until he married that woman over there. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 She's not tight. I was just kidding. That's what my little grandson Dylan, he'd tell me. 
he's 19 now, but when he's a little boy, he'd say, Meet that teething, Poppy. <laughs> but he wouldn't tease him. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Hey, I pastored for 24 years for free. I know how it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 He, he could be doing a lot better financially different places, but he's here tonight. Thank God for a pastor. Hey, did you know it's, it, hey, listen, it's hard to find a good pastor. You can find plenty of preacher, preachers that want to preach, but it's hard to find a good pastor and his wife. I mean, it's almost impossible. When I went to Port Lavaca, you know how many pastors have been there in the last uh, 10 years before I went to, the, to that church, to take that church? There had been over, I think there were, there, somebody told me there had been 11 pastors there. And some of them just stayed for a day, you know. <laughs> I don't know if they just stayed for a day. But I know this, when I came down in that U-Haul from Arkansas, and the next morning it's pouring down rain, you know, after Monday, after church Sunday, and it's pouring down rain, and I asked my wife, I said, Sister Diane, i got to talk to you. She said, okay. And I said, do you want to go back before we unload that thing? You know, we want him to tell, we want him to tell Bishop Kite we're just leave and tell him we had, we had an emergency call to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. But hey, laying all joking aside, ask Brother Gurley. He told us a story yesterday. Somebody's pastor and people mistreated him and all. I'm glad this is a good church. A good church. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have a home church. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. You won't rip, rattle, or tear. Huh? You won't rip, rattle, or tear. I'll just tear. You can put that up there. <laughs> okay. He's inspired. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a beautiful home far over the sea. There's a beautiful home for you and for me. It's glittering time The sun will not shine And that beautiful home Someday shall be mine Hallelujah, I'm free, free, free From this world of I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved for His one. Hallelujah. I found that He would bring me and show me the way. I'm thankful for a beautiful home tonight. How about you? I don't know about you, but this world's not my home. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I sing that song in my head the whole time he was talking, then I'll get up there and forget it. But I'm thankful for some of them old songs. Amen? Amen. Amen. They definitely kept us. And uh, when I was a little boy, there was a group called Teddy Huffman and the Gyms. And I don't know if y'all know anything about Teddy Huffman and the Gym. I mean, you know, they was like one of my favorite groups of all time. In fact, I got his greatest hits collection that I listen to when I need to get inspired. But when I was a little boy, I sang one of their songs called Stepping on a cloud. My grandmother told me, she said, I don't care what else you do, but at my funeral, you sing Stepping on a Cloud. Because I don't plan on staying down here. I plan on stepping on a cloud. Amen. Because one of these days, I'm going to leave. One of these days, I'm going home. I'm going to take 
my final journey, I'm going to step beneath the heaven's blue dome. Hallelujah. We'll be stepping on the cloud. Ooh, that makes you excited, don't you? Uh, you know, we don't preach a lot about stepping on clouds anymore. We don't sing a lot of songs about leaving this world anymore. Hello? But this world is not my home. Amen. I wake up and watch every day. Something's changing and something's getting worse and worse. I just want to be ready. I want to reach as many souls as I can reach. But I want my soul to be ready. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Now, I believe in falling in love with Jesus. But a lot of people need to understand you better fear the Lord first. There'd be a lot more people in church tonight if they fear the Lord. Well, praise God. Amen. You know, and, and I would say it like this. The folks that aren't here tonight, you know, you know, if, if they would just give an offerings what they spend today. Huh? You think they're complaining about it? You think they're worried about it? You think they calculated the cost? Oh, no. No, they like, bring it on. Let's buy it by the case. Buy the super pack. Get the dogs, get the birds. Get the, let's have a good time. Big bags of chips, whatever it takes. And they don't count the cost. Because they're dedicated to worshiping what they worship. But when I stand in his presence... See, I can't tell you who won last year. I can't tell you who won two years ago. I can't tell you who won three years ago. And I sure can't tell you the last time the Cowboys won. Now, some folks, that might, that might matter. But really, most of you don't remember. Because it really doesn't matter. But what happens in here matters. What happens in here is eternal. What happens in here is life-changing forever. Amen. You can wake up tomorrow. Amen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pass it on. But when I... When I was working secularly, amen, I used to love the Monday morning after Super Bowl Sunday. I used to love it. I made sure that I was at my loudest Monday morning after Super Bowl Sunday. I don't know if that was a good witness, but it sure made me feel better. But you know what? I come to praise Him tonight. I come to give Him glory tonight. I come to be fed tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thankful for Brother Wooten. What he had to say. Powerful. Impacting. Amen. We want Brother Waddy to come tonight. Amen. Minister of License. Minister of the Gospel. Amen. Tremendous. Amen. Being used around the area. I love it. I love it when I get a call for any of our preachers to go. And more are starting to leave the door. But that's alright. That's the will of God. Amen. Brother Waddy come deliver the word of the Lord to us tonight. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know nothing about the football Super Bowl because I don't have a dog in that fight. Hallelujah. But I do know a man called Jesus. I do know a man named Jesus. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I come to praise him. I come to lift him up. Hallelujah. I come to call his name. Hallelujah. I come just to worship the Lord tonight. Anybody come to worship the Lord tonight? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Clap them hands. Clap them hands and give him some praise up in here. Give him some praise up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your blood, Jesus. Y'all can be seated if you want. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank everybody, the visitors, for sure, for, for being here tonight. Hallelujah. And if you're not saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you as well. Hallelujah. And I believe that if you're not saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and if you're sitting here under the sound of my voice tonight, if you have a need from the Lord, I, I truly believe that the Lord will meet your need. I believe that. Hallelujah. Whatever your need may be tonight, I believe God will meet your need. Anybody else believe that tonight? Anybody believe that tonight? Hallelujah. 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 I was talking to a certain person, and a certain person told me that it was a Super Bowl tonight. And um, the person told me, well, you know, that the Lord's going to test them. But I thank God that, you know, a couple of people that, and, and that person and a couple of people that told me that was here, you know, it's because the devil is a liar. The devil will do everything to keep you out of the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But I thank God for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And not only do I, I have a message tonight from the Lord, I also have a word. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I, I stand up here behind this pulpit and I, and I stand out here, sit up here and I look across the sanctuary, you know, and I thank God for a church like Peace Tabernacle. Amen. Yeah, I do. Diversity. <laughs> Hallelujah. I do. Hallelujah. You know, white, black, Spanish, doesn't matter because God is not a white God. He's not a black God. He's, he's an on time God. He's a just God. He's a healing God. He's a delivering God. He's an on time God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, and I sit here too, and I, you know, and the devil's busy. The devil's busy. He's, he's busy. That's his job. That's his job. You know, and I stand up here right now, you know, and I look across, you know, and I, and I look and I look at certain people, and I, when I look, I can sp feel, you know, a little spirit of resistance. But that's all right. We're going to break that spirit of resistance in here tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to break that spirit of resistance up in here tonight. So you, you can sit there nonchalant. Hallelujah. You know, and, 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 like, and act like God ain't did nothing from you. You know, and hey, we're going to have some church up in here. We're going to praise the Lord up in here. And we're going to clap our, hey, we just going to let our hair down. Is that all right? Is that all right? Hallelujah. We're going to have our Holy Ghost Super Bowl. How about that Holy Ghost Super Bowl? We're going to have our Holy Ghost Super Bowl. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the, the God that we serve, he is a winner. Because the last time I checked, he ain't never lost a fight. He ain't never lost a fight. Huh? Hallelujah. All power is in his hands. Last time I checked, he said he had the keys to, to death and hell. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't, ain't been defeated, can't be defeated, and will not be defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You know, Sister Dilly, I thank you for that word that y'all can be seated. Sister Dilly, I thank you for that word that, that you gave earlier. You know, and I, and I was over there in the corner, you know, always worshiping and having my mind on the Lord. And, and when you spoke, you know, I, 
And the Lord, you just, you just poured something into my spirit. You know, when you was talking about Zacchaeus. Hallelujah. You know, not only was, you know, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was, he always heard about this man called Jesus. And every time that Jesus would come around and come along, he, he wasn't able to see him because he was too short because of the tall people in the crowd. But one day Zacchaeus, you know, like she was saying, climbed up over in the sycamore tree. Hallelujah. And, and that brought all that back to, and you brought all of that, what you said, back to my, my remembrance. Hallelujah. And it brought it back to my remembrance because once Zacchaeus got up in the sycamore tree and, and the Lord told him to come on down, he told him, today, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house. Hallelujah. You know, and, and I'm saying that because I'm leading up to the title, and that just gave an introduction, Sister Dina, to the title of my text tonight. Hallelujah. And once Zacchaeus was up in that sycamore tree and, and the Lord told him to come on down, I'm going to your house. Hallelujah. And the title of my text tonight is Now I Know Jesus for Myself. Now I Know Jesus for Myself. Since Zacchaeus got a chance to meet the Lord, now he can say, Now I Know Jesus for Myself. Somebody clap your hands and look at a neighbor and tell that neighbor, Now I Know Jesus for Myself. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just taking my time tonight. And the reason why I'm taking my time tonight because I'm just feeling after the Lord. I'm just feeling, my, feeling after the Lord and seeing where the Lord want to lead and guide me. That's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm feeling after the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it won't be long. It won't be long because I'm starting to feel my help now. Hallelujah. See, because the Lord is good. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Praise your wonderful name. And I thank him tonight for the opportunity that he to give me to stand behind his pulpit to bring his word because God is true. Hallelujah. He's true. He's a good God. Don't matter the circumstances. Don't matter the outcome. Hallelujah. He's still an awesome God. He's still a delivering God. Hallelujah. Just because things don't happen to go our way sometime. Hallelujah. He's still an awesome God. He's still a just God. He's still on the throne and he still looks down low and he still hears our cry. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just got to hold on and wait. Sometimes it just, it just, he just, he just checking you out. He just checking you out. He just checking you out. See if you just gonna hold on. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But God is good. God is good. And if y'all don't mind, let's stand up and for the word of the Lord. For the opening word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Wooten, if you don't mind, will you pray over the order of the service tonight? See, you know, let me say this before I get into the word. You know, because, you know, I told you, I, I sit up here, stand up here, and I look across. You know, you have some people, you know, when they, when they find out that a you know, certain person bringing the word or going to preach or what have you, you stand up here, you can look at everybody's body language or how they move. How they see it. But it's not me. I'm just a messenger. Hallelujah. I'm just a messenger. Somebody, you know, want one of the great evangelists to, to bring the word tonight or perhaps Sister Delia, perhaps Brother Pastor Baumgartner, and they've been let down. I feel, I'm just telling you, I, I feel you in my spirit. Hallelujah. 
But it's all what the it's all in his word. It's in his word. It's in his word. Hallelujah. But you know, church, I'm glad, I'm so glad that he used me. Amen. Hallelujah. To be a willing vessel. An obedient vessel. Hallelujah. I didn't ask for this. He chose me. He chose me. Hallelujah. And I thank him for it. And I'm going to give him my best. I'm going to give him my all in all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I refuse to sit down. I refuse to be quiet. I refuse to shut up. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. And he's a deceiver. Yes, he is. He is. He is. He is. He is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know, the spirit of the Lord, the Lord is here. He's here. Right now, this minute, he's here. And I tell you all the time, I tell you all the time, the spirit of the Lord is here in Peace Tabernacle. Not only is the spirit of the Lord here in Peace Tabernacle, the spirit of the Lord dwells here in Peace Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Somebody better hear me tonight. The spirit of the Lord dwells here in this place. The spirit of the Lord loves Peace Tabernacle. The spirit of the Lord loves to dwell here. Hallelujah. 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 And I don't say that lightly because it's true. It's true. It's true. Every time I come up in here, every time I walk through them doors, I feel his spirit so strong, so strong, so strong. And I wouldn't give that up for nothing, 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 nothing. And that's why I do what I do. Not preaching. Run the, run the aisles and clap my hands and tears run down my eyes. Hallelujah. Because sometimes the, the anointing of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord gets on you. Somebody, y'all know what I'm talking about. So you just can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. So what are you ready? Before I, let, before I give it to somebody else, before I let somebody else have what the Lord blessed me with, what he chose me with, hey, if the spirit tell me to move, I'm going to move. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I don't know why I'm saying what I'm saying, but I just want to help somebody. I just want to help somebody. On, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if the spirit of the Lord get upon you, no matter if you, if you feel with the Holy Ghost or not, if, you, if, you, if you're sitting in here, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, but if you feel a little tingle behind your, your neck or if you feel something in your feet, hey, if the spirit, if something tell you to move, you move. You move. You move. You move. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 And another thing, you know, I do what I do because I'm 53 years old. And one day, if the Lord bless me, if the Lord say the same, one day I might be 80 years old. But I might, when I get 80 years old, I might not be able to run like I did when I was 53. So that's why every chance I get, I run, I clap, I cry when the spirit moves. Because somebody sitting in here right now that's 60 years old, 65, 70, 80 years old, they know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Huh? Come on, Sister Money. You know exactly what. Hey, man, I can't run like you used to run, but I, get, I guarantee you anything. Sister Money give anything to run like she used to run. Sister Wadley give anything to run like she used to run. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. That's why when you come up in here, if you get it, hey, if, you, if the Spirit tell you to run, you run. Because one day, you're going to wish you had her. One day, you're going to want her. That's why I'm going to run till I can't run no more, clap till I can't clap no more. Hallelujah. Because, hey, who knows? you got to have arthritis, and you can't even put your hands together. You better clap them hands while you can. You better clap them hands while you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'm just trying to help somebody. Just trying to help somebody. That's all. Just trying to help somebody. Hallelujah. And we're here in Peace Tabernacle. And I hate that. We're going to sit down in a minute. But, I, you know, that's why you can come in Peace Tabernacle. We worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We, 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 we hang from the ceiling. We run. We cry. And feel free. Feel free. If the spirit tell you, do it. Do it each and every time you come up in here. If you come up in here next Sunday, if the spirit moves, you're not out of order in here. You're not out of order in Peace Tabernacle. And I just, I don't know why I'm saying it, but I just put it out there. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of worship. Hallelujah. 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 See, because the devil is tricky. He, the devil is tricky. He'll do anything he can to try to stop his word and, you know, and Try to hinder this and stop that, but he can't stop this. He can't stop this. You can't stop. He cannot stop this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? Because Peace Tabernacle is going somewhere. Peace, whether you believe it or not, I know we got doubters, but I'm telling you, Peace Tabernacle is on its way to somewhere. We are going somewhere. Hallelujah. We are going somewhere. He's going to fill the church up. Yes, he is. He's going to bring other people in. Hallelujah. So, the best thing, if you if you're a saint of God, you better get in where you fit in. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I hate to use that kind of language, but you better get in where you fit in. Hallelujah! Because don't get upset if somebody come up in here and take your place. Hallelujah! Come on, somebody! Come on, somebody! Come on, somebody! Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. That time is coming. It's coming. It's coming. As sure as I'm standing behind this pulpit, it's coming. 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 I know somebody look at me, you know, hey, but it's coming. And I know the God I serve and the spirit that I feel don't lie. Hallelujah. I serve a God that do not lie, cannot lie, shall not lie, cannot lie, don't know how to lie. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We're going to turn to the book of John. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Master. John chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 39. Hallelujah, Lord. And we're going to stop at verse 42. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody got it? And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And he said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now I gave you the title of my text, but I want you to turn to your closest neighbor and look that neighbor in the eye and tell that neighbor, Now I know Jesus for myself. And I want you to set them Bibles down and let's give the Lord another hand clap of worship. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap them hands. Come on, clap them hands. Give him some praise up in here. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Y'all can be seated if you want. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. You know, there are some people who are here tonight, either because someone has invited you or either because you have a need or interest to be here tonight. 
but it's something I want you to know tonight about the Lord that you will never know until you have your own experience with him. Hallelujah. And I think a lot of us can look back over the days and over our past when there was persons witness to us and told us about Jesus and what it would mean to have Christ in our life and something down within made us curious and we wondered about the peace and we wondered about the joy that all that has been said to us that having Jesus would do for you but somehow in the midst of it all we also thought about all these other things that if I accept G Jesus what am I going to have to give up they tell me that a person that if they get saved if they get sanctified they they, they can't go here, or they can't go there, or, they, or you know, they can't do this, or they can't do that. But let me, Brother Roddy, tell you like Apostle Paul would say. Apostle Paul said, let me straighten you out. When I, when I, when I, he said, I want you to hear the whole statement. When the Lord saves you, you can do anything that you want to do. And the reason is simply this. Once the love of God is shared abroad in your heart, by the Holy Ghost, you will not want to do anything that will displease God. Am I right about it, saints? Somebody give him a hand clap of praise. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Because when the Lord filled me, when the, when the Holy Ghost came into my heart, hallelujah, I didn't have that manipulating spirit no more, that lying spirit, that whoremonging spirit, that unforgivable spirit. I was set free. Hallelujah. Somebody give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout, preacher, I know you're telling the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, please hear me. Let me just teach for just a second. Hallelujah. I'm not Brother Backers, but let me just teach for a moment. Hallelujah. Now, in the Old Testament, we find persons knew God only through a mediator. And that's really what the Judeo or the Jewish religion was like. God, he himself, the holy one and lofty one, his people unworthy, unholy, and the only way God communicated to his people was through an intermediary. In other words, a uh, go-between. And his the system was set up in the temple. Well, first the tabernacle, later the temple, there was a part called the holiest of holies where God dealt between the cherubs. And the priest was privileged one time a year on the great day of atonement to enter into the presence of God behind the veil. He went in to offer up that offering to atone for the sins of the people for one year. It was called the great day of atonement. And if you really dissect the word atonement, it really spells at one men. But God and his people was made one on the day of of atonement and God did not God did not deal directly with the people hallelujah he dealt through the priest to the people but when Jesus died on the cross the veil was rent in other words the veil was torn from the top to the bottom exposing the holiest of holies and therefore the first time the people of God was able to enter into the presence of God and thus it is said in that same book in the 10th chapter of the Hebrews let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might attain mercy to help in time of need hallelujah hallelujah and no disrespect hallelujah but they tell you and nowadays you know the in these religions you know they tell you that you know, Catholics, they tell you that you got to go through the priests in order to get to God. But let me, Brother Water, tell you the whole truth. You don't need an intermediator. You don't need a priest in order to get to God. You can get to God for yourself. There is no veil. The wall of petition has been torn down. There is no separation. We can all enter into the presence of God for ourselves. Touch, hallelujah. Touch somebody, repeat after me. Touch a neighbor and repeat after me. Tell that neighbor and look them in the eye if you're not scared of them. Tell that neighbor if you're not entering into the presence of God, it's nobody's fault but yours. Give the Lord a hand clap of worse. Give him a hand clap of worse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me continue to teach for just a second. Hallelujah. Now, here in the fourth chapter of John Gospel, it centers around our Lord's encounter 
with the woman of Samaria. Now, there are several points worthy of our consideration here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this text, first of all, first of all, I want you to bag up just for a moment and look at John chapter 4. And here we, and here we find an explanation why Jesus returned from Judea to Galilee. John 4 and 1. I want you to bag up to John 4 and 1. And it tells you why the Lord goes back to Galilee. And John 4 and 1 it says, When therefore the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Now, the second verse is parenthetical. It says, Those Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. All right? Now, the disciples baptized folks symbolizing the fact that these people had accepted Jesus' gospel and they were becoming his followers. Uh -huh. Hear me now. But Jesus himself did not actually get in the water and baptize anybody. Hello, somebody. But when the Pharisees knew that Jesus had baptized more disciples than John, in verse 3, it says he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Now, there was a mountain of jealousy in the heart of the Pharisees. And one thing you got to remember about Jesus, peace tabernacle. He could have only become a sin offering and a sacrifice for us. If he died as the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb, at the Feast of Passover in the manner prescribed by which he died on the cross, meeting all the claims of the law and all of the prophecy being fulfilled. If, if they had a successfully throw them over a cliff like they tried to do on one or two occasions or picked up stones and, and stoned him to death, he will never become the Passover lamb for us. Hello, somebody. And when Jesus felt the mountain of tension in Judea, the jealousy that was brought about, the Pharisees was already upset about John the Baptist, and the next thing they heard, that Jesus had more followers than John. So Jesus left from Judea, entering into Galilee. Now, verse 4 says, and he must need go through Samaria. Now, hear me now. Now, this is unusual because although going through Samaria was the most direct route from Judea to Galilee, but from the days of Ezra and Nehemiah, the mixed population of Samaria was sharply divided from the Jews. In fact, the bitter rivalry between the Jews and the Samaritans led to violent attacks upon many of the Jews who had journeyed through Samaria en route to the feast in Jerusalem. And any stragglers that got separated from the main body of travelers were in danger. So consequently, an alternative route was found. And they would not go through Samaria, but they would cross over into Perea, bypass Samaria, and then come back again and cross the Jordan River. But Jesus said, now hear me tonight, church, but Jesus said to his disciples, I need to go through Samaria. And I want to know tonight, this morning, this night, what Jesus was simply saying. Jesus was simply saying, I'm going out of my usual route, hallelujah, but simply because I have a soul that has a need of my service. Hallelujah. And I can I just can I just break it down to to you tonight? I want to break it down to you to my uh, to my level, to Brother Water level. What Jesus was simply saying, he was saying that he was out there on Interstate 59. Hallelujah. On Interstate 59. And he just so happened to hear somebody crying and, and saying that. I have a, you know, I have a need, and 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 in fact, he said, I don't. The Lord don't love me, and and the Lord can't use nobody like me, and and um, I'm a I'm a lesbian, I'm a whoremonger, I got so many faults, and nobody loves me, and, and 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 nobody can help me. Hallelujah! But one day, 
one day, one day, hear me, saints of God, hear me, saints of God, one day before you became a saint of God, one day you decided, oh, I'm going to call on Jesus. I heard about Jesus. I heard about this man. So I'm going to call on Jesus because I have a need for Jesus. So you decided one day that I'm going to call on Jesus. And just so happened when you called on Jesus, Jesus was on the outskirts of 59. And, and when you called on Jesus, he stopped in his tracks and him and his caravan was together and, and you called on Jesus and Jesus stopped and he said well, just wait one minute. He told his caravan I must and I have a need. I must go through the Samaria of Warden, Texas. I must get off the main route and come through your Samaria of Warden, Texas. And I want to know tonight, church, where would you have been? Where would you have been if Jesus hadn't got off of 59 and came to Warden, Texas of your Samaria? If Jesus hadn't got off the main route and came to Warden, Texas of your Samaria? I want to know where would you have been? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise and tell him, thank you, Lord, that you came to my Warden, Texas. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm so glad that the Lord got off the main route and came to my Samaria of Warden, Texas. Hallelujah. When I called upon the Lord and told him that I need deliverance from crack cocaine, that I need deliverance from being a whoremonger, I need deliverance, Lord. And he got off the main route of Warden, Texas and came through my Samaria. Hallelujah. And gave me deliverance. I thank him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. Somebody give him another hand clap of praise. Somebody give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, give him a hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And back to my text. And they told Jesus, they said, Jesus, well, this woman, she went to get her water. This woman has a, has been talking about hasn't been talking about her. And why should she come in the middle of the day to get her water instead of waiting until the cool of the evening, coming at another time? And they said that this woman evidently did not want to meet the other women because she was one of the conversation pieces. Hello. And church, you would imagine she would be in that day because even when we talk about folks who end up in those gossip magazines, those that have been married five and six times, and if that's astonishment, astonishment to us in this day, what well, it must have been in that day. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there must have been something to the fact that she tried to stay out of the limelight of the women. She was not popular among the women. She was popular among the, women, among the men. So consequently, when Jesus asked her for a drink, she said, you know, the Jews have no dealing with Samaritan. Don't you know that? And you don't have anything to draw. This well is deep, and you have nothing to draw with. And what would you be having talking to me, knowing that there's no communication between Jews and Samaritan? Hallelujah. And Jesus said, and Jesus had to say to the woman, I tell you what, if I'd have asked you, if you'd have asked me, I wouldn't have treated you that way. I'd have gave you water that you wouldn't have to come, come here to draw. And the water that I give you, you won't even have to thirst anymore. And the woman had to say, now wait a minute here. And if you got that kind of water evermore, give me a drink of that water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because Jesus wanted to bring it right up front and talk to her on the level of her interest. Hallelujah. And he, and he said, go get your husband. And Jesus knew that the woman didn't have a husband. But he wanted to talk to her on the level of her interest. And peace tabernacle. And I want you to know that whenever you're trying to win a soul for Christ, you got to learn how to talk to folks on the level of their interest. Hello, somebody. Jesus always talked to people on the level of their interest. When he found a fisherman, he told him to drop your nets and follow me. And, and I'll make you become fishermen of men. And when he talked to the housewife, he wanted to let her know about the leaven 
that was hidden in the bed and about the coin that was in the house. When he talked to the soldiers, he told them that you shouldn't do violence to no man. He always talked on the level of one in us. And we got to learn to do the same, Peace Tabernacle. And we get when we go into the flower shop or the flowers, we got to learn to let them know that he's a lily of the valley. When he talked to the astronomer or the stargazer, we got to let them know that he's a son of righteousness with healing in his wing. And he's a bright and morning star. When he talked to Nicodemus, a doctor of the law, he talked to him about life. And don't even mention Philip, my God, Philip. Philip went down to us to Samaria to preach upon a citywide revival. The Holy Ghost picked him up and carried him out to a desert place called Gatsa. There to preach to one man. And when that Ethiopian eunuch came riding along from the book and reading from the book of Esaias, which is another pronunciation for Isaiah. Hallelujah. He wanted to, him to know that he's talking about leaders of the slam to the slaughter that no man would declare his generation. The Bible said Philip, my God, started at the same scripture. And church, if you're going to win souls, you got to know the word. You can't always jump folks from another part to another part. You got to start at the same scripture and let them know about Jesus. Somebody give him another hand clap of praise. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus told the woman, go get your husband. She said, I don't have one. He said, you said, well. He said, as I count them up here, one, two, three, four, five. He said, you had five, and now you're shacking up. Hello, somebody. And even the one you got now is not yours. And the woman wanted to know, are you a prophet? And she said, that when the Messiah comes, he's going to tell me of all these things. And Jesus said to the woman, a woman, I want you to know that you're talking to the prophet. You're talking to the Messiah. Hallelujah. She said, wait a minute now. You're so well versed and you know all the scripture. I want to know something. Since the Jews and the Samaritans fell out years ago on naming the mountain, there was a difference. One called the mountain one thing, and the Samaritans, in their copy of the Pentateuch, they named another mountain. We fell out over religious things anyways. So I want to know from you, where is the right place to worship God? You Jews say in Jerusalem, but our Father will worship in this mountain. And I want to know where is the right place to worship God. And you know, Peace Tabernacle, people are still falling out over the same thing. Hallelujah. You see, I've been Baptist all my life. Baptist bred, Baptist born. When I die, I'll be Baptist gone. You know, hallelujah. Hmm, it's the right place in the Methodist church. Or should I be in the church of Christ, God in Christ? Or should I be in the apostolic church? Folks are arguing about which church should I be worshiping in? What banner should be over the door? Well, I got news for everybody up in here. There's, there's folks going to hell out of all these denominations. Hallelujah. Somebody, hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. And started with the apostolic faith. Hallelujah. Yes. And somebody said, well, Brother Roddy, why do you say that, Brother Roddy? And the reason is simply this. Hallelujah. As much as I preach. As much as the pastor preached, hallelujah, there's some here that really don't want to change. They refuse to change. They think they're getting by, hallelujah. They say I got the Holy Ghost, but they still have that lying spirit, that homosexual spirit, that lesbian spirit, that unforgivable spirit, that lustful spirit. And then been sitting up in here and hearing the word of God for 10 and 15 and 25 years and refused to change. And the devil has got them deceived. And that's why I said it. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And I don't make no means about it. Don't make no means about it. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said to the woman, Believe me, the hour cometh now is when the true worshipers is not going to be, and please hear me, Peace Tabernacle, it's not going to be a matter of geographical location. 
it's not going to matter to God whether you're in the mountain or in Jerusalem, for God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. A lot of folks say, I don't understand, Brother Roddy. You go down to that church, Peace Tabernacle. True story. Folks are running down the aisles, and sometimes it ain't nothing going on. And somebody will shout, thank you. Hallelujah. Well, one of my worldly friends, he told me, he said, brother, he said, Roddy, I don't understand. You know, and I told him, you got that right. You don't understand. You got to be in the spirit to understand this thing. You, you see, if you're not in the spirit, you got to go find it all somewhere on the paper. Or you got to go find it and read it according to a program. Hallelujah. But there's something about the spirit. When you get in the spirit, the deep calls to the deep. And without anybody saying anything, there's a presence of the Lord that begins to sweep through the place. Hallelujah. And God says, I want somebody that's not wrapped up in a title or organization. I want somebody that's willing to get in the spirit. I want somebody that's willing to live in the spirit, to give in the spirit, to talk in the spirit, to walk in the spirit, to shout in the spirit, to clap in the spirit. I want somebody that's really to want to praise me. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody shout the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Back to my text. What Jesus put on the woman was powerful. She dropped the water pots and ran into the city. And that's, you know, and that's what I was telling you earlier. And what Jesus, sometimes what Jesus put on me is sometimes it's too powerful. And that's why I run, I clap, and I get the yeah. booger lip, and I get the nose running. Because sometimes what God put on you is too powerful. Come on, somebody. You know I'm telling you the truth. Hallelujah. 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 And I love that feeling. I love it. And the Bible says she went to the men. She didn't go to the women. The women had already shut her out. They had already tuned her out. They didn't want to hear what the woman had to say. Her popularity was with the men. And that's in verse 28 through 29, chapter 4. Verse 28 through 29. The woman then left the water and ran, went away into the city and said to the men, come and see a man. In other words, she said, I know what the rest of you fellas are about. I've heard y'all lying. Y'all told me that there was no man nowhere that could resist me. But fellas, I want you to come and see a new breed. I want you to come and see a man that told me all things that I ever done. He got to be the Christ. My God, the women. I don't know where they were, where the men were, where the women were, but they deserted the town. Yeah. There they came to the well and there they found Jesus. They came and listened to him and the men let Jesus know. They said, Jesus, this woman, she's been talking about you and knowing her like we know her, it's got to be something to what she got to say. And they said to Jesus, why don't you come and stay with us two days? He stayed in sidecar of Samaria for two days. And at the end of those two days, and that's my theme, the men said, we believed you at first because of this woman's testimony. Oh, now that I've heard you for myself. And church, you can say what you want to. People can tell you that the Lord will make you higher than that cocaine. The Lord will keep you cooler than your cigarettes. But you'll never know the Lord until you know him for yourself. You'll never know him until you get to know him for yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody standing if you don't mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Everybody know the story about Queen, Queen Sheba? Let me tell you a quick story about Queen Sheba. Queen Sheba was in her own, was in her homeland. And Queen Sheba heard about this king. So Queen Sheba decided that she wanted to go check this old king out. So Queen Sheba decided that she was going to go to Jerusalem. And she told her significant others, she said, honey, you got to see this old king over in Jerusalem. I w you got to see how attentive that his ministers are. You got to see how this king, how he uh, ascends, carry himself in the house of the Lord. You got to see how glorious his kingdom is. So Queen Sheba, she got a camel train together. She got her spices and her gifts together. And she decided that she's going to go see this king, King Solomon. And so when she arrived, she decided that she decided to tempt old King Solomon with all types of hard questions. And every question that she asked the old King Solomon, Solomon had an answer. Hallelujah. But after she got through trying to tempt old King Solomon, she never really looked around. So after she got through tempting old Solomon, she looked around. And when she really realized where she was, and she saw how glorious his kingdom was. She saw all the, the fine gold and the fine linen and just all the fine stuff. And, she's, and she said to herself, once she realized how glorious his kingdom was, and she said to herself, she said, oh, she said, oh, 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 oh. She hadn't realized how really glorious her kingdom was because she, she, was, she blinded her own self. Hallelujah. And I said all that to say this. People can tell you how glorious God is. People can tell you that he's a deliverer. People can tell you that he's a healer. People can tell you that he'll t touch your mind. People can tell you that he'll do all these different things for you. But you will never know until you have your own experience with him. Am I right about the saints? Am I right about the saints? You'll never know him until you have your own experience with him. Hallelujah. Let's, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 And I said all that to say this. If there's anybody want to come up to the altar and just talk to the Lord for just a few moments and tell the Lord that I want my own experience with you, Lord Jesus. I want to find you out for myself, Lord Jesus. I want to know you for myself, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody Come on, somebody. Do me like the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Okay. Nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Come on, somebody. 